Pay careful attention to your breath. Know when it's coming in, know when it's going out. Know, know when it's comfortable, know when it's not. And if it's not, you can change it. We don't just accept things as they are. If we accept things as they are, the Buddha would have stayed in his palace and contented himself with the life of a prince and a king, perhaps. And the Dharma wouldn't have been found. He found the Dharma because he didn't accept his situation. He said there must be something better. Now the way to find the way out of that situation did depend on accepting certain things, certain principles of causality, being responsible for your actions, being careful about your views. But you use that knowledge of causality to manipulate it in the direction you want it to go. So you accept the facts of the way things work. And then you see there must be a way to work it so I can find true happiness. So the contentment has to do with your situation outside. As long as we have enough food, clothing, shelter, and medicine to allow us to practice, we're okay. But don't be content with where your mind is right now. now this requires a balancing act, not to be too negative with yourself about your shortcomings. Notice when they talk about how the Buddha would teach the Dhamma, he would instruct, in other words, give information. But then also he would urge, rouse, and encourage. There's no discouraging in there. It's all to give you the idea that it really is worth putting forth the effort, and you can do it. But you do have to be careful. You have to pay careful attention to what you're doing to make sure that you are working with causality, cause and effect, in a way that really is effective. Because you're doing it for the sake of your own well-being, long-term well-being. When they talk about taking the self as a governing principle, you realize that you're doing this for your sake, for the sake of getting past suffering. So whatever is needed, you should be willing to do it. If you don't do it, can you say that you really love yourself? When you take the world as a governing principle, there are beings who can read minds. And if you're getting discouraged, giving up, what are they going to think? They'll probably have a lot of compassion. But at the same time, they're not going to approve of what you're doing. Compassion doesn't mean approving of what people are doing. It means having their best interest in mind. So you keep that in mind as well. You don't just keep on doing what you're doing because that's the way you've been doing things. You ask yourself, how am I doing things that's causing unnecessary suffering? How can I change? Then you take the Dharma as a governing principle. This is a really good Dharma. You've got a good opportunity here right now to practice something that is so straightforward so consistent, so clearly aimed at true well-being. There are all sorts of good reasons for wanting to do the practice and for encouraging yourself. The yes is something that can be done, and yes, you will benefit from doing it. Then it's simply a matter of watching over your practice to make sure that it stays on course and does take you in the direction you want to go, because we are going in a direction. That's why this is called a path. It takes you to a goal. When you've arrived, then the Buddha says, okay, there's nothing more that he has to teach you. You've solved the big problem in life. When that's solved, then other problems don't weigh on the mind at all. So there's that emotion the Buddha encouraged you to develop. It's called renunciation grief, or renunciation distress. There are beings who have found awakening. I'm not there yet. When will I get there? Okay, use that desire, use that grief or distress to motivate you on the path. Because unlike the distress of the world, this is a kind of distress that has hope. There is a way out. It's simply a matter of finding the way and following it. The way is offered for you right here. So the next step is up to you.